Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Okay guys, so for today's video, I have another discussion topic for all of you today. You see, for a while now, a good many of you have been asking a particular question in my comments section that you all said you would like me to address for a future video. And this question was, could cross flooding have been used to prevent the Titanic from sinking? And when I read the question, I was like, okay, yeah, that is a very interesting topic to tackle. And you know what? I thought I would finally do it in today's video. Okay, guys, well, hey, with the intro out of the way, let's now discuss if cross flooding could indeed be the answer to prevent the Titanic from foundering. <music> Okay, so before I tell you all if or if not cross flooding is the key that could prevent the Titanic from sinking, what we first need to do is discuss exactly what cross flooding is. And then, once you all have a good understanding of it, then we can apply it to the Titanic to see if or if not it would have made a difference on the night that the ship went down. Okay, so in order to properly explain to all of you watching this video what exactly cross flooding is and how it works, I think the best way to do it is to do a little thought experiment with all of you watching this video, okay? So let's come up with some hypothetical scenario on some random ship, and for the sake of this thought experiment, I decide to use my Disney ship model here, okay? And also for this experiment, I came up with my own layout for how the Disney ship's watertight compartments are laid out. I made a little map showing you this, and I will put that map right here. Now, the black lines you see on this map represent the Disney ship's hull, but the red lines you see represent the Disney ship's watertight compartments. Now, not only does the Disney ship have watertight compartments that go horizontally through the ship's interior, very similar to Titanic, but it also has another watertight compartment that stretches all the way from the ship's bow, cuts completely through the center of the ship, and then stops at the ship's stern. So basically what this means is the Disney ship is not only divided into individual watertight compartments, those watertight compartments are also divided again between the port and starboard side of each compartment. So basically what this means is, is if water gets into the starboard side of one of these watertight compartments, it can't enter the port side of the same watertight compartment. Now that all of you are now familiar with the internal layout of our pretend ship, let's now create a hypothetical scenario for our ship for our thought experiment, okay? Let's pretend that our pretend ship was involved in a collision and it struck something right along here on the starboard side and breached one of the ship's watertight compartments. Water quickly filled that area, but due to the fact that only one watertight compartment was, was breached, the ship has no danger of sinking. The ship is not going to sink. And due to the unique nature of the ship's watertight bulkheads, the water can't move from the starboard side of the damaged compartment over to the port. It's contained in that one area, okay? Now, even though the ship has no danger of sinking, the ship is still going to develop a very small list in the direction that the water was coming in. Now, this is where cross flooding comes into play. You see, if you want to cross flood, the purpose of cross flooding is to correct a list that has developed due to a ship getting damaged in some way. So basically what the crew would do is they would open up the port side of the same damaged compartment and allow the water to come in there. And as a result of the water flooding in, this would of course bring the ship's uh, bow down a little bit lower in the water. However, it would correct the ship's trim and even the ship out. So this is basically what cross flooding is for. It's to correct a list in a ship that's damaged so the ship has an easier time getting to its destination. Okay, so now that all of you watching this video now have a good grasp of what cross flooding is, let's now apply it to the Titanic and see if it would do anything to help out the ship on the night of the sinking. Would it do anything to help out the Titanic? Well, no it wouldn't. And this is because there are two big problems with trying to use cross flooding in regards to the sinking of the Titanic. Now, the two big problems you would run into if you tried to use something like cross flooding to help out with the sinking of the Titanic is, number one, the amount of damage the Titanic's hull received by the iceberg was way worse than what we came up with for our little thought experiment. And number two, the Titanic's watertight bulkheads weren't built within the ship in a way to make cross flooding even an option. And I'll explain more about what I mean in just a second. You see, under the iceberg impact, the first six of the 16 watertight compartments within Titanic were breached, and the Titanic could only remain afloat with her first four compartments breached. Any more than that, and the ship would sink. And just to give you a better idea as to how massive 
this damage was, we're talking about a space from the front of the ship to just after the first funnel. That's how much space along the Titanic's hull was opened up to the sea. So absolutely crazy how much damage the ship got. Now, in regards to the ship's bulkheads, you see, within the ship's interior, the Titanic's 16 watertight compartments were separated by 15 individual watertight bulkheads. And these bulkheads basically cut through the interior of the ship from the ship's port side to starboard. I made this little map up here where you can see the ship's interior and the red lines you see cutting through the interior part of the ship, those represent the ship's watertight bulkheads. So as you can see, the bulkheads inside the Titanic weren't arranged in a way to make cross flooding even an option like what we have with our little hypothetical ship experiment we did earlier. And another thing about the bulkheads is the watertight bulkheads in, within the Titanic did not go all the way up to the boat deck. They only went up to around E deck. So normally this isn't a problem because if the Titanic only had four watertight compartments breached, the ship's bow would sink down so low but due to how physics works, the water wouldn't be able to reach the top of the bulkheads and then spill over. That's why they had them only go up to E deck and they didn't need to go up to the boat deck. But with six watertight compartments breached, the water would easily be able to reach the top of the bulkheads and then spill over. And then they would just basically do like a chain reaction. They would just go back and back and back and back and eventually the Titanic would founder. So that's what happened on the night of the sinking. Now, if the ship did have watertight bulkheads arranged in a way to make cross flooding even an option, how would that affect the sinking? Let's assume for a moment that everything about the iceberg collision and the way the bulkheads were designed is exactly the same, with the exception of the bulkheads now had a way to make cross flooding even an option. How would that affect the sinking? Would it help out at all? Well, honestly, I think it would make things a lot worse. So the reason why I think having a bulkhead system to make cross sledding an option with the Titanic would make things worse is because with six watertight compartments breached, nothing could be done to save Titanic. You know, the ship is going to sink. But one of the big things with the Titanic that allowed everybody on board the ship to save as many lives as they did was due to the fact that the Titanic stayed relatively stable throughout the sinking. And a big reason why this happened was due to how the watertight bulkheads in the Titanic were arranged. If they were arranged in a way to make cross flooding a thing, then honestly it would make things worse because think about it. The ship struck the berg on the starboard side and water to began entering the ship through the ship's starboard side. Now, obviously the water can't go from the starboard side to the port side unless the crew wanted it to due to the whole cross flooding hall arrangement. However, the water would still be able to spill over the tops of the bulkheads at the E-deck level and then spill over and go back and back and back and back, just like what it really did. So honestly, what I think would happen is the Titanic would develop an initial list to starboard. However, since the water really wouldn't be able to get over to the port side, as it spilled over the tops of the bulkheads, it would just start spilling over on the starboard side. And thus, this would increase the ship's list more and more to starboard until the Titanic eventually capsized and sank. So honestly, if the ship was arranged in a way to make cross sledding a thing, the crew would have to do it to keep the ship stable throughout the sinking. And basically it would recreate the exact same scenario or a similar scenario anyway, to what really happened on the night that the Titanic went down. So basically it would be counterintuitive to have the hull arranged like that in the events of the real sinking of the Titanic. Now, obviously the cross sledding thing wouldn't do anything, but there was another theory proposed by some people in my comments section in regards to the cross sledding that they wondered if it would play a role because the fans in my comments section proposed a way to do cross flooding with the actual way that the Titanic was designed. And they were curious about my thoughts on the matter and if or if not, it would play any major role in preventing the Titanic from sinking. So the idea that was proposed by the fans in my comments section about how to do cross flooding on the Titanic was, so as we stated earlier in this video, under the iceberg impact, the first six of the Titanic's 16 water tank compartments was breached and this allowed the Titanic's bow to slowly fill with water and then slowly but surely the bow was dragged down to the point where the water was able to spill over the tops of the water tank bulkheads on E-deck and then cause a chain reaction effect. So 
My fans' ideas in the comments section was, what if the crew of the Titanic intentionally breached some of the watertight compartments at the very back of the Titanic and did cross-flooding like that? So the flooding at the back of the ship would be try to be used to equalize the flooding at the front of the ship. Would this do anything to stop the Titanic from sinking? Could this stop the Titanic's bow from going down so low in the water that the water wouldn't be able to spill over the tops of the bulkheads? And shoot, some of the fans even proposed using the back part of the ship to flood it so much that it would actually pull the damaged parts of the Titanic's bow up above the waterline so it couldn't flood from there anymore. Would any of this stuff stop the Titanic from sinking? Well, ultimately, no. It would not stop the Titanic from sinking at all. It would drastically change the way the Titanic sank, but it wouldn't change the sinking, and in fact, it would probably make things a lot worse because you would accelerate the ship's sinking time. And in case you want details, well, I'll explain. You see, if you did try to breach the compartments at the back of the ship to basically cross-flood the flooding that was going on at the front of the ship, well, the only thing you would do is stop the Titanic's bow from going down first and then causing the stern to rise up in the air. You would essentially cause a sinking scenario where the Titanic would simply just pretend my hand's the water, where the Titanic would just drop straight down. Because the Titanic would still sink so low down in the water that it would cause the water to spill over the tops of the bulkheads anyway. And basically it would just go inward from there. So the water in the bow would head towards the middle and the water in the stern would head towards the middle, just spilling over the tops of the bulkheads as they went until eventually the Titanic just dropped straight down and sank. And it would probably sink a lot quicker than what the real one did under, this, under these circumstances. And in regards to the whole idea of flooding the Titanic's stern so much that it would lift the Titanic's bow and the damage caused to it by the iceberg up and out of the water. Well, you would essentially have to sink down the Titanic stern so much and breach so many compartments that you would just create a reverse sinking scenario. So yeah, the Titanic would just sink stern first instead of bow first. I mean, you gotta think about how deep below the water line the damage was to, by the iceberg and how much water you would need in the stern to lift that up out of the water. Yeah, you'd lose most of the ship to try to do that to water anyway. So yeah, that wouldn't work. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a very fun little thought experiment video to do and to discuss cross flooding and how it would have changed the Titanic sinking and all that stuff. So, hey, great idea to all of you in the comment section who proposed this idea to me. This was a fantastic video. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave any other ideas you have for other discussion videos in the comments below. I would love to see them. And thank you all so much for watching. You all are awesome. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a great night, everybody. Special thanks to our Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support.